check this out. Right now it's about three feet long. Fully extended, it's about five and a half feet. I just built a DIY extendable trailer which is going to replace all of my other DIY trailers. Let's walk through all the trailers that I built and see if you can come up with something better. Let's take a quick look at how to build these and talk about some of the things I learned along the way. The trickiest part with any DIY bike trailer is almost always the hitch connector. I like using these replacement hitch connectors. They come as an assembly for about 20 bucks on Amazon. It includes the whole connector which is connected to the spring and there's a plastic piece inside of there. You bolt through whatever connector you want to use. It goes through the plastic and through a hook in the spring. It includes the pin and the little clip right there and of course a safety strap. So what I did for this one is took a one inch electrical PVC conduit and this is a 45 degree bend here which I connected to a straight piece bolted them together and I put uh, there's a one piece right here and a piece going along here of half inch steel square tubing to reinforce the whole thing and then around the outside this is fiber fix just to kind of be extra sure and I bolted it directly to this bracket which holds it to the sliding piece on the trailer frame. Another way that you can connect double wheel trailers is either on the seat post or what I tried to do first was I reinforced this rack with some tubing and so this right here is a, a, a piece of a half inch piece of tubing which is very similar to the hitch bracket uh, the connector so I was able to make basically a, a J shape here that connected the hitch to the back of the rack but the spring was right here and for some reason it just was kind of fishtailing on me every time I tilted the bike to pedal even the slightest bit of a tilt it would just kind of cause the trailer to swivel left and right it wouldn't stay stiff I think it was partially because of the way that this mount is a little loose here um, so when I stiffened that, it did help a lot, but it still just didn't feel great. I didn't like the way it felt. I do prefer to have the weight connected to the axle. And so obviously the important thing is that there has to be a vertical and horizontal pivot. And that's what's nice about this spring mechanism is that it allows it to move in pretty much every direction. So if you are going up a hill or... You're making a sharp turn and you're leaning into the turn it doesn't put too much stress on the trailer frame this is a 40 gallon tub it could easily fit a 50 gallon or a 64 gallon i decided to go with this one mostly because i probably am not even going to need this much space and the way that it's connected is there's a flat bar going across there uh, two bolts on each side holding basically there's two pieces there's a flat bar on the bottom also and they're sandwiched together to to reinforce the plastic and also there is a neodymium cup magnet the same one that I'm using right there it's, I believe it's a one and a quarter inch neodymium cup magnet with 110 pound pull force and then back here is just two large bolts with large washers so this is very easily popped off of there and the magnet pops right off as well
So these bolts will prevent it from sliding past the frame in the front. The frame is made out of steel, so this magnet just sits flush and has a nice solid connection. And these two bolts in the back side can go right inside of these holes inside the frame. This one is a little heavier than my other trailers. My other trailers are each about 22 pounds with the basket and everything. And those could have been lighter. I used steel baskets. I was kind of over engineered. I, I didn't need that heavy of a basket. This one, as you see it here, without, the, without any basket or bin on it, weighs 24 pounds. And with the bin, this, uh, this 40 gallon tote bin is 11 pounds, so it brings it to about 35 pounds total. Uh, with the 1500 watt Bafang Ultra, I don't even notice this thing is back there. I haven't done too much testing yet with uh, you know, heavy weights. So pretty soon actually I have some home improvement projects where I'm going to pick up some 8 foot lengths of wood on here and I'm also going to fill this tote with a bunch of sandbags and maybe some gravel. So we'll get to test the, uh, the strength of this frame and see how much weight we can pull with it and see what that feels like. I'll probably do another ride vlog. I think the biggest weakness of this frame, the way that I have it built right now, is going to be the way that I have the wheels attached. This is definitely not recommended. Um, I, I would not recommend doing it this way. I'm experimenting with it just to see exactly how strong these will hold up. So these are 3 8 inch 26 TPI standard rear axles from a kid's bike that came on uh, these 20 inch wheels and I dish them over a little bit so that they can fit and they're just bolted to this frame if you can see the bolt on that side they're basically just bolted to the frame with a piece of aluminum um, I think this is a three quarter inch square tubing just to kind of hold them steady. So I've stood on it and I've kind of been just kind of jumping around on it a little bit. I weigh less than 200 pounds. So we'll see. I think the sheer strength on these, which would be whether or not they would actually just um, crack in half, is really high. I, th I don't think there will be any issue unless maybe I load it up with like 500 pounds and then I jump on it as hard as I can. Maybe I could snap one of these axles mounted on one side like this, but I think it's more likely that they're going to bend and they'll bend in, the wheel will bend in, and I'm not sure exactly what will happen then. I don't think it would be a catastrophic failure, so I have to experiment with it and kind of go easy for now just to make sure that these things can handle the type of load that I'm carrying. Probably the only thing that I will do differently or I might have to do differently if these axles do bend in a little bit I will most likely or the first thing that I had considered was to just get an actual axle that goes across. Um, this tube right here is hollow and it already has a hole right there so it's pretty perfect. That was my original plan was to just put a, a rod through there and then uh, have the wheels just connect to the rod as the axle but I wanted to, I already had these wheels, I don't feel like I mean this thing cost me nothing, I, I had all of these supplies already laying around but um, if I wanted to buy those wheels I think they're only probably about 30 or 40 bucks each for 20 inch industrial wheels that have the bearings already built into them and then it's probably a 5 8 inch or a half inch uh, opening in those bearings and you can just then slide it onto the rod and sometimes if you get a, the right one it can uh, you can just bolt onto the outside or you could use a pin I would probably try to find one that would be a uh, smooth rod section inside the hub wheel and then have a little bit of threading on the outside if possible and I think for this size it would have to be three feet long I think it's about 36 inches 
So the frame in this direction is 36 inches. And like I said, in this direction it's 17, plus the wheels I think are about four and a half or five inches for each wheel. So you would want to get the axle to go out and be able to fit a nut on the outside of those wheels. I do also have a DIY design similar to this. I haven't really figured out the kinks for making it extendable. However, you could do a very simple DIY very similar to this to where you have the, um, the hitch connector on the one side and you could just basically make a bunch of rectangles. And so if you do want to use bike wheels, I, I like the idea of using bike wheels, especially since they're easy to come by. You could find a kid's bike. You could basically build a rectangle that surrounds the wheels and then put two bars on the inside so the wheels can attach on both sides and that would make it significantly stronger. So if I were to try to do something like this from scratch, it would probably wind up costing me about 150, maybe $200 total. And I would basically just make a bunch of rectangles with one inch square tubing. And um, I could share my plans with that. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. And I, at this point, I just have a few drawings, but I'll probably wind up trying to build one of those pretty soon. So the frame I used for this was originally a body champ inversion table and it's rated to hold I think around 300 pounds or so. Obviously you know an inversion table you're supposed to be laying on this. This section right here had that piece of wood with the padding which is where you would lay on it. So it's obviously sturdy enough to support a large person. It's 17 inches in the center, which is pretty perfect for most tote bins. They're usually about 17 tapered up and they go up to about uh, 20 or 22 inches. And so the wheels, the inside of the wheels, I think is about 21 or 22 inches. So that worked out pretty perfect. Let's take one more look at it fully extended. And so for it to comfortably fit some longer items, some wood or tubing, what I'll most likely wind up doing is just put either an angle or a piece of square tubing underneath here. Uh, this way it'll just have something to support it and something for the materials to be strapped down to. Once I'm ready to throw the tote bin back on, Line up those bolts right there, and the front side, the magnet just snaps right onto the steel. So this was one of my first DIY trailer builds. This one I made from a jogging stroller that my neighbor was giving away. I just added some tubing at the front here and put this steel, attached this steel bin on with some pipe clamps. What's nice about this one is um, these axles are, they're stub axles, so they can just be disconnected uh, with a little quick release pin. It helps save weight a little bit. I think the mistake I made was this basket should have been, if I could have found a plastic one or built or made a plastic one, it would have been much lighter. This trailer uh, weighed about 22 pounds, I believe. And I was using that same hitch arm. I actually built that hitch arm to fit on here and it was bolted right to the side there, which worked perfectly. But I decided that this trailer is most likely going to uh, render this one useless, so I'm just using the, the hitch arm for this new one for now. So this one is obviously my DIY single wheel. Built this one a couple years ago. I haven't gotten too much use out of it. It's a little wonky the way that I have it set up. This basket is made out of steel. It's just too heavy and unnecessary for this thing. And overall it's just too heavy. It, it's about 22 pounds. It weighs the same as that double wheel one. 
And the thing with single wheel trailers is that there's nothing, obviously there's nothing supporting them on the side. So when you have them loaded and you stand up to pedal or you pedal hard, um, the second you start to lean, it, the, the weight on the sides makes you really feel those leans. So the, um, the fails on this one is that obviously this would be much better off connected to the axle, but this frame design with the sliding dropout doesn't allow me to do that. I would need to get like the burly adapters which um, would thread onto here and then have extra, an extra space for me to do that. Um, but they're very expensive. I think they're like $20 each and I need one for each side. So I just haven't bothered with that. This is just half inch steel EMT that I flattened with a uh, vice grip and, and just bent it in a little bit. And this is a 20 inch, or actually I think it came with an 18 inch wheels of kids BMX bike. And I put a piece of one inch by one inch diameter by I believe six inch or five inch um, uh, steel pipe and just threaded um, you know I threaded the caps and then I bolted straight through the, the caps on those pipes so that's a really nice strong connection and what I really like about the single wheel trailers I love the, the idea of them because they just they track so nicely it it feels like it's just part of the bike when it's not weighted down so again if it's if you have a really strong connection and you're connected to the axle you don't feel it as much and it tracks really nicely um, I just need to figure out a way to lighten it up I think if I were to if I wanted to mod this one I'd probably try cutting the lower half of this frame off it probably doesn't need that extra strength since I don't put that much weight on it anyway and then just get a short, a lighter basket. I could just put a much lighter past plastic tote bin or something smaller on there. I suppose one other shortcoming for the single wheel trailers is you lose a lot of space by having the wheel at the center. You have to manage your, I've seen some where if you wanted to use a large shopping bin, let's say you take a plastic one, you could just cut out a slot where the wheel is and you'd want to probably protect the wheel so your things don't slide into the wheel. Uh, that should be pretty easy to do. But the hitch connections on these are a little more challenging. So you, like I mentioned, you, you want to be able to attach somewhere on, obviously it has to be on both sides of the bike. And usually you'll want your horizontal, your vertical pivot to be at this connection, so if it's connected to the axle, you could make it to where it's it's connected, but it still has room to swivel. You could use nylon washers to allow it to still swivel, swivel vertically. But what you really need to pay attention to, the most important thing, is having a wide connection here, because that's what supports it on the when it starts to tilt. And you need to make sure that this axis is vertical with, uh, I'm sorry, perpendicular to the ground because if it is at a certain angle, even a slight angle, when you lean the bike to make a turn, the whole thing will just jackknife down. So this part of the basket will just go straight into the ground if this is not at a perfectly perpendicular angle with the ground. And one of the reasons I haven't been using this trailer, the single wheel trailer, as much is mostly due to the frame design and the axle design of my new build. As you can see with the Nexus hub, you really don't have any way to attach to the axle. Um, there's a little space there by the chain, but I, I wouldn't really feel comfortable going inside, the, inside of that mount there. So until I figure out a stronger way to mount it, on both sides somewhere near the axle that could have a vertical pivot for now I'm just sticking with these single sided hitches and the two wheel trailer. This one's obviously not a DIY but it's a really nice trailer I got it for 40 bucks on Craigslist 
This is the Allen Sports JT-X1. Uh, it has, I think, either 18 or 16 inch wheels and it doubles as a jogging stroller or you can just pop the wheel off. and mount the hitch back in. So this one's obviously for my son. He loves this thing. We love riding around in it. So I think this is going to be tremendous. This will allow me to transport longer objects if it's a, five, a six foot piece of tubing or eight foot pieces of lumber. I haven't tested it with anything longer yet, but I think I could probably be able to transport 10-footers also, but I'll have to experiment with that.